Joe Singaritas, it's Timmy Joe making videos, computers, stuff and things. And uh, today on the docket, uh, it's, it's been a hell of a freaking year, hasn't it? And if you're a PC enthusiast, there's been every good reason to go out and make a computer, buy a computer, some really good games this year. Cyberpunk, uh, you know, comes out. It really makes it so you want a high-end computer to be playing video games these days. Uh, yeah, so it's it's been tough because you want to go buy new stuff everything's terrible we're going to talk about a deal i got on a computer because i'm so hyper vigilant about scanning the internet for these deals and how you can do it too so uh my uh whole you know kijiji facebook marketplace area uh people say i have a really good used market where i am and i don't i live in a town of like fifty-four thousand, with an outlying area of maybe another thirty thousand. that's annoying to go to those places you know it's a half hour 45 minute drive on the highway sometimes as, as far as my hometown is concerned the reason why i get so many good deals is there is an act community of com people that use computers and actively you know upgrade and sell their stuff around here but it's more so that I look four or five times a day on all the sites possible to find the deals possible because I run a little bit of a business and uh, you know if I can get some used parts for really good deal on someone that's not in the you know in the space and isn't realizing how expensive things are right now heck that's the way I make some money so we've got a computer here and I bought it for 800 Canadian dollars on the old Kijiji and I bought it within an hour of it being posted I think I check seriously four or five times a day on all the computer the possible computer and some you know musical instruments guitars and stuff like that uh, you know selling sites and stuff like that and that's how I came up with this stormtrooper of an NZXT case with a half decent computer in it that is for sure 800 Canadian dollars we'll rip it off here and uh, we see there's a half decent ARS motherboard in there. There's a GTX 1080. There's an SSD. There's some good stuff happening here. 850 watt power supply for no reason. And uh, as soon as I saw this, I knew I could uh, easily take the parts and sell them for a lot more. Uh, right now, a computer, like, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised when I see this for $1,200 and it actually sell uh, with an i7-8700 in it not even a K with an H370 uh, series motherboard, 16 gigs of RAM, a 1080. Like this will sell for $1,200 in my area and people are selling equivalent computers to this Ryzen, uh, you know, R5 uh, 2600 systems for $1,800 with 1650, 1660s and stuff in them. So this PC is worth more money than I bought it for, for sure. So totally worth buying it. And then when I went and picked it up, it was in a really nice area and uh, the uh, dad was like doing it for his daughter. You could tell he had just bought a brand new computer based on the e-waste uh, peripherals I got with this. And uh, the girl said, oh, I was, I, I'm a photo artist and I do a lot of Photoshop and it wasn't working with Photoshop. And I was just thinking, i7-8700, 16 gigs of RAM, 1080. Like, what are you talking about? This doesn't run Photoshop. 8700, some A data, um, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, and we'll start with the issues with this. So, a couple things I noticed right away. The RAM, single channel. I don't think that should cause, on this class of PC, that many slowdowns, but yeah, that's definitely something that should be fixed up. Uh, we see here we've got the 1080 in the uh, eight times slot down there. This is an H370 motherboard. I haven't looked it up, but I would imagine it's not running at 16 times. That shouldn't actually cause that big a bottleneck either. I plan on running some Fire Strike before and after. So we're gonna switch this whole PC out and make it more modern, more good looking. Uh, and at the thanks of uh, Corsair in just a second. So yeah, Hyper 212 Evo uh, CPU cooler. So that's, you know, half decent. We're not gonna be overclocking on this thing or anything. It does have some M.2 slots, has wireless. And we have uh, a 500 gig crucial SSD that he went out of the trouble to put in uh, this little holder, but then, didn't put it in any of the 4,000 drive bays that this old NZXT case has. And uh, I've posted this on Twitter. Some people are saying this case is just terrible for airflow. I mean, it's, it's old. Look, it's got a side panel like this. Maybe if you put a fan in here and blew it on the graphics card, it would be half decent. But uh, we're going to be changing all this out. And then, like, I really like that he didn't have any. Or with this motherboard, he should have had 
at least a couple of black SATA cables come with it, but he's using these like blue jelly and yellow SATA cables for the stuff. It's just, it's kind of a funny PC. So we're gonna go ahead and take this whole system. I'm gonna run a couple benchmarks on it just to see if the single channel and the, the uh, where the placement of the graphics card really makes that much a difference. And uh, I'm gonna put it in a brand new case and this is all gonna be sponsored by Corsair, even if they didn't really give me any money to do this. Uh, they just provided so many parts that I haven't made any videos with that we're gonna do a whole Corsair upgrade here. So CX650F uh, RGB power supply. So the RGB power supply in here will be upgraded from one that just does one single color to one that does rainbow puke. So, you know, that's an upgrade. It's gonna give us like 20 FPS. We're also gonna put a liquid cooler on it. The IQH100i Elite which is their super RGB one here. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this, because it doesn't really need it, it's fine with that Hyper 212 Bebo, is just because I have it. And it's gonna make it look way more modern and way more uh, hardcore of a gaming system. And then this old Stormtrooper looking thing with the two little holes I can double finger. <sighs> why do they ever put the, you're supposed to run your, your loop outside of the case there through that? I don't know. Uh, we're gonna replace that with this beautiful Corsair. Is it terrible when you don't even know what they sent you? The Corsair 4000D Airflow. It's got airflow in the front. It's gonna be wonderful to put a little uh, AIO in this thing, make it look ultra modern, make it happen. So queue up making that happen here. I'm gonna run the benchmarks off screen and uh, once we get the computer all looking nice and do a little montage, we'll have uh, a conclusion to make, I'm sure. So pull it out, make it happen, Timmy Joe stuff, do a build montage. I am so, so scared. What's, what is that? That's the most thermal paste I've ever seen. I've ever seen on a computer, man. I'm gonna message this guy. <laughs> I mean, there's already some in the socket. I, if I pull it out, it's just gonna get in there. So I'm trying my best to clean this up. Okay, and we're done, and she looks way more 2020, less 2014 over the Stormtrooper case with the acrylic side panel. Even though it's a pretty good case. Uh, airflow and stuff like that, not so much. So, look at this, nice 
uh, blacked out panel. That's why I put all the lights in there so you can see them. Uh, you know, I got all, everything facing in for RGB and it's all set to RGB puke. Just because, you know, computers. And uh, thanks to Corsair for providing the following parts. We got the uh, Corsair 4000D Airflow, really nice case. Uh, it's, it's more of a budget-oriented case, but super high airflow. Got a nice uh, dust filter in the front. You can take off this panel. I found out instead of taking off the whole front panel in order to install some fans on it, which is real nice. Uh, I got the RGB pointing in here, and uh, you know it's going to be real decent airflow. There's lots of ventilation on the top uh, in the power supply basement, and uh, then we got the uh, nice new power supply in there, just because I can use an 850 watt somewhere else. This system only needs 650, so I might as well switch them out for a nice Corsair one, the CX650F RGB, and the RGB is pointing up, even though that kind of doesn't make sense. It'll be an another out take for the you know the, the airflow in the case uh but it's gonna fight with this a little bit but you know it'll be fine i've, I've checked it it's actually way better temperature wise than it, it ever was uh and uh then we got the corsair iq h100i elite capelix and that's their more rgb oriented aio and it's got rgb fans instead of the more performance oriented fans it's got a nice weird block here with some crazy colors on it and i switched out that little panel from a more blacked out one to one that's got lots of see-through colors there so you can really get a nice look at the pump on there so we got her all set up and uh, it's looking nice and much more modern uh but did we increase any performance here by switching these things out well probably not so much i mean the aio might give a little bit therm more thermal headroom to the cpu but it's an h370 chipset so we're not going to see anything too crazy that's for sure in fact i played with all the settings in the bios trying to get a higher frequency N nothing would get me any more than like 4.6 gigahertz on one core 4.4 on all cores uh, and uh, the memory was already set to 2666. That's the max it'll go on that chipset. Real silly stuff. Uh, but when you put it in dual channel and you clean everything up, put it in a better uh, case, move the GPU up, you do get an increase in performance. So in Cinebench R20, uh, my best I ever did was uh, 3381 with the old setup. Switching the RAM helped a little bit. It got another 34 points or something like that, uh, you know, in the in the grand scheme. Actually, th it's less than that. It's like 32 points. Uh, so, you know, that's not much to look at. Temperatures are a little bit better. Uh, they were getting up into the 85s before, and they're more like, uh, you know, under 80 now, which is pretty good. You know, this is an AIO running a non-overclocked 8700. It should be just fine. The GPU performance is another story, though. We pop up here, start off with Time Spy. We got another uh, 300 points here. Not, well, well, it's less than that. It's like 200 and, and yeah. We got some more points. We see here the CPU score actually got much better once we switched up the RAM. So that kind of makes sense. Uh, and an overall higher score is an overall higher score. I don't, I'm pretty sure this computer would have been fine for Photoshop. I don't know why they, they had to sell it, but your loss is my gain. So this has been a little upgrade journey using some Corsair parts on a really good deal I got for this thing. I would imagine that this thing's worth 1200 bucks now uh, or I, I would probably list it for like 1350 or something like that if I was gonna sell it uh, and it would be it would be probably it would probably get uh, $400 more than uh, initially you know with, with that other case and you know I did replace with some more expensive parts here but you know, it's, it's not that bad. You know, it's not that bad a deal. It's, it's worth a little bit more, I think, now that it looks the part, because uh, that's what a lot of people look for when, you know, the used market. So get a good deal, 800 bucks on a nice gaming PC. I think I'm gonna take this home over the holidays and play some video games on it, but uh, I'm at Watch Jimmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. I wanna thank Corsair very much for providing the case and the power supply and the uh, cooler all of which are very nice uh, you know, products, nice case to build in, really uh, high airflow you know, on a budget. Uh, it's a pretty good case to, to look into, the 4000D airflow. Uh, the cooler, if you like RGB puke, oh my goodness, yes. And it comes with a fan controller and an RGB controller where if you bought up a bunch more Corsair fans, it would all plug into that one unit and control it in IQ, which is real nice. And uh, yeah, the power supply, I mean, it's, it's adequate running all kinds of loads and stuff on it. I never heard it spin up or ramp up or anything. So there's, uh, you know, it's good for that. And it can talk to uh, uh, Corsair's IQ software too, if you plug it into the back hub there. So that's pretty cool too. So I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram Twitter. Thanks very much for watching. Happy holidays and all that good stuff. And I can't think, thank you guys enough for watching. You know, you guys are awesome. Thanks Corsair. I'll see you guys in another video. Merry Christmas.